I'm Diana. I'm glad to see everybody here. Thanks for coming today. It's a beautiful day on the farm. So happy to be here. Thank you, Tanya, for having us. Today, you guys are all enjoying some Thieves Wellness Tea. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. We're gonna go through elderberry syrup right away. We're gonna talk about some immune system basics. We're gonna talk about bee products, essential oils, how they're all used together. We'll do a demo to make some honey lip balm. And then I'm gonna show you how to make propolis tincture also. So you're gonna get to go home with some goodies today. First, we're gonna do the four cups of filtered water, a half a cup of dried elderberries. And I use dried ones because they're really easy. I make elderberry syrup at least once a month, so I just like to have all this stuff on hand. I'm gonna eyeball this because I don't have all of my measuring cups and things here, so we're gonna go half a cup of dried elderberries. These are from a co-op, but you can buy these on Amazon. I just look for any good quality dried elderberry. You'll see like people will say in the reviews which ones are good. You can find organic ones. You know, in general, I like to buy organic. So if you can find organic ones, that's even better. The next thing we're gonna add in is a quarter cup of rose hips. So these are whole rose hips. These are organic too. These are from Amazon, but you can buy these at co-op too. Yeah, I'll show you. They just look like they look like really big dried berries. So a quarter cup of those are going in because those are gonna have some really great immune supporting properties as well. The next thing I have in here is cloves. I'm gonna do a teaspoon of whole cloves. Next, we're gonna do a quarter cup of ginger. Now I love fresh ginger. You can use ground ginger as well. Don't use a quarter cup if you're doing ground ginger. You only need about a tablespoon if you're doing the ground. I like fresh ginger. So this actually was fresh about a month ago. I peeled it all, cut it, and then it was frozen. So that's why it looks a little wiggly right now because I just pulled these out of my freezer this morning. But those just go in. You don't have to really do anything special with them. You just want to take the peels off so that it's not bitter in your syrup. And you said one. You only need about a tablespoon if you're doing ground. And then we're gonna do cinnamon. So you can either do two teaspoons of ground cinnamon or um, you can use the cinnamon stick. I'm just gonna put one big cinnamon stick in here. I'm gonna hang on to it for a second until I get my orange zest in and then I'll use that to stir and then I'll plop that cinnamon stick in there. If you're using an orange, you can just use like one big orange to do the zest. So I just have these clementines, so I'm gonna do two. Zest two of them. Have you guys all zested before? <laughs> yeah, okay. So when you do zest, you want to just take off like the top of the peel. You don't want to get any of the white pith part because that's going to be what's bitter. Oh, I'm always like grinding down to the white. <laughs> Are you? No. Yeah, that's, that's the part that's bitter. So the reason that we're using um, orange peel is because the orange peel is where the good essential oils are. You could use orange essential oil too. I just kind of like to mix it up and use the zest sometimes, but if I don't have oranges, I'll absolutely just use the essential oil. But I'll add it in later after it's done simmering because essential oils don't need to be heated like that. So if you're doing the zest, you want to add it in though before the simmering because that little bit of heat is gonna help the zest come out of the peel. I would use maybe like three or four drops of the orange essential oil. And you'll see me use some lemon essential oil to finish off this recipe as well. Mm. This is really easy to make and it should last in your refrigerator for months. Like this stuff, it does not really go bad. You'll use it before it sits in there for months, but it shouldn't go bad. So that's just gonna hang out in there. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. What I want to achieve is like small to a medium simmer. I don't want it boiling. It doesn't need to be really vigorous. It just needs to be enough action in there to extract all the goodness from these ingredients that we put in there. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I'm gonna set my alarm to check on it in 30 minutes. I'll kind of be watching the heat in between then. But in about 30 minutes is the right time for it to simmer to release enough of the liquid so you have enough concentrated juice to make the right ratio for your elderberry syrup. So let's move ahead to the next slide. It's called three parts of the immune system. So number one, the physical barrier, it's your skin. That provides the physical barrier to pathogens, viruses, microbes, bacteria, all that bad stuff. Second part, the middle is your innate immune system. That, this is that non-specific cleanup system that you were born with. The natural processes that happen in your body to fight off when you're feeling sick, that's all just part of your innate immune system. So we'll get 
to a little bit more of that in the next couple slides. The third part is the adaptive immune system. These are specific defenses that developed based on past exposures. So this is what your body has learned you may come in contact with again. So I'm going to remember what this bacteria or pathogen or whatever it is. I'm going to remember that and then I'm going to know how to fight it off easier the next time. So that's your adaptive immune system. We're going to be working today mostly in the innate immune system and we'll talk a little bit about adaptive as well, tools for both of them. On your next slide, the clinical definition of immunomodulators is any substance that modifies the response of your immune system. So when you're talking to a physician and they say something about immunomodulators, this is what they're talking about. On the left side is going to be immunostimulants. Those are substances that are going to increase the response of your immune system. And on the other side are immunosuppressives. Those are going to be the substances that decrease the response of your immune system. And a couple examples of those that you may know of, immunostimulants, monoclonal antibodies fall into that class of immunostimulants because they, they're given to you once you, um, that pathogen is already in your body and they're trying to ramp up that immune response quickly. So that's an immunostimulant. And then vaccines also fall into um, that immune stimulant category. Immunosuppressives, for example, any drug that can be given to an organ transplant recipient to prevent organ rejection, you want your body to be less good at recognizing foreign bodies. So that's why immunosuppressants are given. So where do honey and essential oils come into this big picture of the immune system? Well, um, honey and other bee products, which we're going to talk about today, they have antimicrobial and they also have immunomodulating properties to them. Same thing with essential oils. Essential oils are derived from herbs, flowers, roots, resins, branches, like any part of a tree, flower, or plant that you can think of. Different essential oils are drawn from those. So they also retain the antimicrobial and immunomodulating properties of the plants that they come from. That's why there's so many different essential oils, because they come from all over the place. You can buy them either as singles, so like lemon or frankincense or peppermint, or you can buy things in blends where different essential oils have been blended together to uh, make different recipes, such as purification, immunopower, Egyptian gold, and we'll talk about those in a little bit as well. Okay, so let's talk specifically here about immunostimulants. Many studies have demonstrated that reduced duration of infectious illness is shown when you use herbal immunostimulants, and those were tested against a placebo. It really does help the body fight infection by augmenting your body's innate immune response. Okay, so it's taking what your body's already doing and it's helping ramp it up either faster or to a greater extent. That's what um, is being stimulated in your body. So immunostimulants are typically used to treat short-term acute infections through the stimulation of your own immune activity. They can help your body resist infections during the beginning stages and all the way through the duration of that infection or illness. So it's never too late to start taking an immunostimulant if you're experiencing some sort of illness. It's also never too early. So the first sign of like a scratchy throat, feeling bogged down, a headache, anything like that. Anytime you're feeling off like that and you're like, oh yeah, when this happens, I get sick after, start your immunostimulants right away. So you want to use um, immunostimulants in conjunction with antimicrobial agents as well to get the most efficient results. Some examples of immunostimulating herbs, garlic, wild indigo roots, myrrh, purple coneflower, elderberry, which is what we're doing here, and then lichens or this specific one called old man's beard herbal definition of immunomodulators. So this is a little bit different. You'll notice before I stated the clinical definition of immunomodulators for you. So that was meaning anything that increases or decreases, anything that changes your immune response. When you're talking in the herbal world and you hear like an herbalist or a functional medicine practitioner talk about immunomodulators, this is actually what they are talking about. It's a little bit different than that clinical definition. Also known as deep immune tonic. In the herbal world, they use um, immunomodulators as a tonic support for your entire immune system. They are considered slower acting with a more prolonged effect. So these are gonna be safer for you to use over a long period of time or to use every day. And in the herbal world, immunomodulators have a more balancing effect rather than thinking of them as stimulants or depressants or suppressants. Herbalists think more of immunomodulators as say your immune system is feeling just kind of down, like feeling saggy. 
it just kind of tightens everything up. So that's what they mean by like a tonic that can tone your immune system. These are used where there's poor immunity or there's overactive immunity. If that seems really dualistic to you, then I just will tell you that you have to kind of forget what you know about how pharmaceuticals work because pharmaceuticals, you take them for one specific thing, right? They don't do more than one specific thing. On the benefit side, there's a whole list of side effects that happen that you really don't want to happen. But if you are thinking more of from like an herbal standpoint where things are brought into balance, it can bring things that are way too active down to the middle and things that are not active enough up to the middle, okay? So some examples of immunomodulating herbs, astragalus, ginseng, cordyceps, which are like fungus, and then some specific ones, reishi mushrooms, shiitakes, turkey tail, and maitake. All of those mushrooms are going to be great. Basil, ashwagandha, and licorice root as well. So you might recognize some of those because even when I go kind of through the um, tea aisle of the grocery store, I'll see a lot of these things in tea, which is great. If you can find an awesome like organic or um, like consciously grown or harvested tea, they're gonna be great for your immune system too. Now let's move on to antimicrobials. So these are gonna be different than immunostimulating, immunomodulating, um, and immunosuppressing substances. So antimicrobials are substances that will help the body destroy or resist pathogenic microorganisms, and it's gonna go specifically after that microorganism. It's not going to use your body's natural process to attack that microorganism. It's just gonna go directly for that, okay? So these aid the body in strengthening its own resistance while also throwing off that illness. Because if your body is freed up from having to attack those microorganisms, it can put its defenses somewhere else. If you can kind of think of it like an army, you're letting those soldiers rest while someone else is kind of coming in to take care of those pathogens for you. Many antimicrobial herbs are also anti-inflammatory, which is amazing because you get that dual benefit. A lot of the problems that people see when they're sick or down or are fighting against a pathogen is from increased inflammation in their body. So their body is really trying to fight that inflammation and not putting all of its good defenses into fighting that organism that is invading. Under this category, garlic, calendula flowers, myrrh again, cayenne peppers, and lots of bee products. Today, all of these things that I'm showing you are helping your body with a multi-directional attack. You see on the left side of your next slide, the one that says multi-directional attack, the left side where I show you a bottle of myrrh, that heading should say immunomodulators because that's going to ramp up the body's immune response to cause more antibody production, NK cell activity, which um, that stands for natural killer cell activity. It's a part of your innate immune system. And then on the right side, antimicrobials. Those are gonna work directly on the virus or the bacteria. So I'm showing a picture of some honey there, bee products, and then thieves essential oil. So let's do a little bee product orientation. First is wax. It's made in the bee's belly glands. It's used to make honeycomb. Honeycomb is edible. It's good for your skin. It's high in vitamin A. Next to the wax is royal jelly. Royal jelly is produced in glands on the back of the head of the bees. This is concentrated from bee pollen. It's really dense in amino acids, which is why we like protein because our body breaks down protein into the usable amino acids. This royal jelly is the food for newborn bees for about the first three days after they're born. And then those newborn bees will transition to honey and pollen as their food, which is the normal bee food. And only the queen bee gets to eat royal jelly all day, every day, forever. And the queen bees live for what, like three to five years, is that right? And then normal bees are like a couple months? Yeah. Yeah. If you go down to the bottom half, on the left side we'll start with propolis. This is the beehive's immune system. So propolis is made from resins and saps from the trees. Propolis is amazing, it's antimicrobial, it's used to seal up the hive against invaders and against infection. The middle category there is honey. Honey is concentrated nectar from flowers. Honey is the carbohydrate energy for the worker bees. If you move to the right on the bottom, it's pollen. Pollen is collected from flowers. It provides nutrition in the form of protein for the bees, and it's also nutritious for humans. You haven't started collecting pollen, right? I haven't tried that yet. Okay. Future years. Yeah. I'll be your first customer yeah. if you do. I'm very excited to start incorporating some bee pollen into my 
into my wellness routine too. Bee pollen, you can buy from other bee companies too. Some of them will dry it. Some of them will sell it in a little bit more of its like wet form. You want to get as close to raw as possible. You don't want it heated too much because it will destroy some of the good properties of the, this bee product. But important to note also here that all bee products contain enzymes from the bees because that is how bees take that raw material and turn it into wax and royal jelly and propolis and honey. They take it into their bodies, they mix it with their own enzymes, and then they spit it out or shoot it out from a gland or whatever to make all these awesome things. The B enzymes are great for us as well. Do you guys know what enzymes are used for in our bodies? Digestion. Digestion. Yeah, they're used for breaking down the food that we consume. So, yeah. Well, I have a question. I've always heard it's important to buy the honey from your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is because the bees can fly up to a five mile radius. So they're collecting all the things that are close to where you live. And to reduce allergens or allergic effects to things, you need to consume a tiny bit of the protein over a long period of time to help your body with that adaptive immune system. So it recognizes, hey, I've had this before. I've had a little bit of it before. It's fine. And I don't need to react to that. So that is why they say local honey is amazing for your allergies. Because you want to buy it where you live. Because if you buy honey, like I really like this bee company in Savannah called Savannah Bee Company because we vacationed down there. And that was kind of my first exposure to like, like good quality, like quality made honey. You know, not like squeezy bear honey that you find at Cobb Foods. So I was buying that. But as good as that is for people that live in Georgia, it's not great for here because I was still having tons of allergy symptoms because the flowers and stuff that those bees collect from are not the same ones that are here. So I wasn't getting any of that allergy effect, but I was, you know, still getting some of like the antimicrobial, antibacterial, enzymatic benefits of those products. So next slide, antimicrobial activity of bee products. So this is from an actual clinical study where they took apart the beehive and they looked at each component of uh, the bee products and they ran tests against four different pathogens and they tested how well each of the antimicrobial effects worked against each of the pathogens. So if I was to categorize them, I would say royal jelly was number one, had the most antimicrobial effect against all four of those pathogens. Number two, I would say propolis is kind of a tie between propolis and honey just because of the way they reacted to different strains. And then bee venom, way down at number four. We haven't really talked about bee venom. I don't personally think it's like a, like a great or sustainable way to have treatment of, from bee products. You can get much more benefit from consuming the royal jelly, the honey, and the propolis, even the beeswax, and not doing bee venom treatments. I don't know how you feel about um, bee venom treatments, Tanya. When the bees sting you, so forgetting the venom, they die. Um, there are like boutique spots where you can go and get bee venom treatments, but you know, unfortunately, like those bees, after they give you treatment, they're kind of done. This royal jelly, is that something you can buy somewhere? I've never mm -hmm. heard of that before. Mm -hmm. We haven't tried to do any of that. So that is... I mean, how do you even harvest royal jelly separately? I honestly have no idea. There are other companies. There's a good one out of Canada called Beekeepers Natural. You can buy a nice like royal jelly. Yeah. It's expensive. Uh huh. You can also buy you can also buy products that are like all of them combined: royal jelly, honey, propolis, and bee pollen, like all mixed together. And those you would just take like a teaspoon of it a day and kind of get all the benefits. Mineral essence has really. <laughs> yes. Good. Yep. Right. Mineral essence does. I didn't bring mine, but um, that's something that I take every day too. But it has um, royal jelly in it. Yeah. Good. Good call. I'm gonna check my timer on our elderberry. I think it looks pretty good. I might leave it on for just another minute while I talk about the benefits and then we'll finish up that elderberry demo. Okay, so the benefits of elderberry syrup, for one, once you see this and taste this, you're gonna realize that it is such a great base to add in other herbs and tinctures. It's immune enhancing. It also has antiviral properties because of all the stuff that we're putting in there. So you're gonna see the elderberries. You saw all the other ingredients. We're gonna add honey to it and we're gonna add lemon essential oil to it. So you're gonna get both those antimicrobials and immunomodulators in there. They have been used in the past for treatments of colds and coughs, also other acute infections that I'm not allowed to talk about. Effective against low-grade fevers, headaches, um, occasional nausea. People have even seen benefit in clinical studies using this for asthma, croup, hay fever, conjunctivitis, which is pink eye, rheumatism, tonsillitis, and like a whole bunch more. Also clinical studies have been run on elderberry syrup specifically about joint disease, allergic conditions, and diarrhea. So, Kind of use it for everything. It has so much good stuff in it that it's not going to harm you. It's a great place to start. 
to like try to see if you can get some benefit out of it. You can use this as a daily immunomodulator or you can use it as an occasional immunostimulant and it really depends on your body because some people, even with the amount of elderberry extract that's in there, if your body is sensitive to immunostimulants, you maybe just want to use this when you're feeling down. Some people will want to use it every single day and it really, you just kind of have to experiment with it and see how you feel on it. How you use immunomodulators, I kind of just talked about that every day. If you are frequently exposed to microbes, if you have a lower immune system, if you have poor gut function, because all of your immunity is built in your gut and it circulates throughout the rest of your body, you can use them every day for whatever period of time you deem necessary. Since you guys are in charge of your own health, you're the only one that can know what it feels like in your own body. You can also just use immunostimulators for acute scenarios. So people will use them when they just feel something coming on. They'll use them just for a few days or just use them until they feel better. And then it goes back in the refrigerator and then you'll see it next time you're feeling sick. It's totally different than a probiotic. There are some probiotic and prebiotic components to it, but I wouldn't use it as a probiotic. Probiotics are still gonna be great for populating your gut with those helpful microbes. All right, so the next slide is one tablespoon at a time. That's the adult usage. The bottom one where it says one teaspoon at a time or daily, that is the child's usage. You are in times of uh, um, can you take more than that? Mm -hmm. You can, and I would just recommend splitting it up. Take more than a tablespoon a day, but take like a tablespoon in the morning with some ningxia, take some in the afternoon, take it again before bed. I'll kind of go through a little protocol later on in the class too about what I do when I'm feeling down. Let's get our elderberry off of this heat. I'm gonna let it chill out here for a second and just cool off a tiny bit while I get my honey in the jar. Does it smell so good right now? Can you smell it? So this is a one quart mason jar. When I make elderberry syrup, I love putting honey hut buckwheat honey in it. And why buckwheat honey? Because buckwheat honey, specific studies have been run on buckwheat honey against the active ingredient in cough syrup, which I can't remember what that's called. It's like doxlatoflosan or something like crazy like that. Um, buckwheat honey performed exactly as well as that active ingredient in child's cough syrup without all of the dyes and sugars and colors, all that stuff. None of the artificial flavors to make your kid wanna drink that. Buckwheat honey, it's like a teaspoon of this. If your kid's coughing, it's amazing. So I use buckwheat honey in my elderberry. You can certainly use the regular honey. I haven't seen a specific study run on that against the cough syrup. I would expect it's, it's pretty close to the same, but I also just love the taste of buckwheat honey. And you'll see with the rich flavor of the elderberry, a little more earthy flavor of this buckwheat honey is amazing with it. So you're gonna... Ooh, perfect. Yeah, you are gonna love it. on site since you need to have like acres of dedicated buckwheat fields mm -hmm. to guarantee that the bees will only go to buckwheat plants. So we get that from a farmer about an hour south. A much larger operation for crops. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pour one cup of honey in here. And I don't measure it exactly because you know it's hard to measure honey. So I just use the markings on the side of the mason jar. <laughs> And I noticed that the one I pulled to make this in doesn't have the markings, so I'm using this, <laughs> this other one next to it, and we're just gonna get close to a cup. So we're gonna start with a cup of that. And when I mash this juice out, what I'm looking for is about two cups of juice. So I want the ratio to be one third honey and two thirds of this elderberry juice. You wanna pour out all of the berries and everything in there. So there's lots of good liquid and polyphenols and everything still in these berries. So you want to just go around and mash. Even like break open all of these rose hips because there's a lot of liquid hiding inside there. Just do your best to mash it around and get all of that liquid out. Yeah, so I think we did pretty well there getting right about two cups. So remember when you started with four cups of water in there, you want it to reduce by about that half. It's going to give you a nice concentrated juice. And if you don't get two cups, it's fine. You're just gonna have a little bit of a different ratio. So if you boiled it down a little more and you have less than two cups of juice, it's just gonna taste a little bit on the sweeter side because your honey ratio will be bigger. Or if you didn't boil it down quite as much, then you'll just have a more dilute 
um, or, or runny syrup. So no, it's really no big deal. This is just the consistency and the ratio that I like to do. The other thing I wanna to mention too is you wanna let this cool a little bit because if you get your honey too hot or you get your lemon essential oil too hot, it's going to take down some of the beneficial properties of those two things. You want it to cool enough just so it's not gonna, it's not gonna like burn or boil those um, good components out of there. So since we're outside right now, this is actually cool, cooling down pretty quickly. Do you do anything extra, like do you do anything with your I don't. Nope, I put it in the compost. That's about it. Turns into dirt for the next year. You can put it in your compost. I compost everything. <laughs> All right, so once this is cooled down a little bit, I'm going to just pour this over here in case it gets out. Okay. Oops, and then we're going to finish it off with like four drops of lemon essential oil. You want to just rotate this and get all that honey to incorporate. Once it incorporates in, then it's not going to separate back out. So even if you stick it in the fridge or whatever and it sits there for a couple weeks, it shouldn't separate it back out. If you do have some solids, which presses through your filter, those will settle out to the bottom. So before you drink your elderberry, you just want to give it a shake so you can get some of those solids into your cup as well. And do you get what temperature impacts the essential oils? Like what temperature is too hot for that? I've heard like 120. Okay, so that's right around where it is for honey. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to get above like 130. That's when we'll start kind of killing off. Yeah, because all those enzymes and, and good microbes and stuff in there, yeah. Yeah, so essential oils and honey really do just like go hand in hand. They work so well together. They enhance each other. They also just both have those great um, immunomodulating and antimicrobial properties. So they're amazing to use together. The next slide I put in here is a bonus recipe for you, something I'm not making today for you. So this bonus recipe for you is called Fire Cider. This is a great um, immunomodulating tonic as well. This is something that you can drink every single day if you want to. It's based on Briggs apple cider vinegar, which is great for your gut health, which in turn is great for your immune function and also more of like that probiotic effect because that apple cider, if you get it with the mother, is going to have all of those great probiotics in it for you. And then you're just gonna pour the warm cider vinegar over the solid ingredients in the jar and let it sit on your counter for three to four weeks. Each time you walk by it, just like shake it up. That'll help get it to extract from those solid ingredients. After it's done extracting three to four weeks later, strain it just like we did, retain the liquid, and then you're gonna add honey and cayenne pepper to your cider, to your taste. If you like it sweeter, you add more honey. If you like it more spicy, add more cayenne pepper. Okay? Mm -hmm. Can you cut up the onion at all? Yeah, so just slice it. Okay. Yeah, nothing fancy. It's all gonna get strained anyways, but just like a nice slice, even if you do a dice, that's gonna help more of the cider contact the surface. So last word on bees. Bees in general are disappearing. A lot of that has to do with toxic pesticides. Herbicides and pesticides are the top killer of bees. So since bees can fly up to that five miles, it's important that all of the spaces that we are providing for them are going to be clean. And so like Tanya's farm is amazing, but like who knows what's happening with their neighbors. If they are spraying Roundup on their flowers and their um, vegetables, and same thing is happening over here, those bees are being exposed to that. So we can be good neighbors to our bees by making sure that our environments are kept clean and free of pesticides and herbicides. Another thing is farming methods. Monocropping farms have led to a decrease in biodiversity for the bees, which decreases the resilience of the bees across the generations. When you drive out west and you see one farm, like all they grow is corn, for like five miles, that's a monocrop, yeah. And then the next farm is soybeans and that's all they're growing for like five miles of soybeans. Back in the day, people would just have their own farms where they were growing tomatoes and zucchini and corn and beans or whatever. So they were growing a little bit of everything. So the bees had a variety to bring in. So like all of like the good antimicrobial things, they were gathering from all different types of plants and being able to conglomerate all of that into making healthier bee products. And urban developments too. So fewer green and flowering spaces means fewer places for bees to collect their pollen and their nectar. So we can also be great neighbors for our bees by providing just lots of flowers for them, lots of plants for them to uh, visit and collect from. It's especially important in neighborhoods since a lot of People now just have beautifully manicured lawns, which look lovely. 
but so grass chemicals does, yeah, yeah, chemicals and then grass provides nothing for bees where yeah. you nothing's know, we could do flowers or we we're an organic property so we don't have any chemicals but also let a lot of it go natural so they will go to the dandelions and the clover and whatever grows mm-hmm. and obviously a lot of people don't want weeds in their yard but if you're going to do that at least try to plant flowers or trees or mm-hmm. something more than just grass grass yep. yeah if you learned something new about bee products today, can you raise your hand? Yay. Okay, if you are excited to add bee products to your wellness routine, can you raise your hand as well? Thank you. All right. Okay, so honey lip balm. Should we do this next demo? The ingredients that we're going to use are two tablespoons of shea butter. is 1.5 tablespoons of coconut oil. Two tablespoons of beeswax teaspoon of honey. On this pot, I just put some water. I'm going to put my double boiler on top to melt those things gently. So I'm mixing those four things. Again, it's two tablespoons of shea butter, 1.5 tablespoon of coconut oil, two tablespoons of beeswax, one teaspoon of honey. I'm going to get my tubes set up. So if you see this one, this is a test batch that I did uh, with the honey in it because I've made it without honey before, and I thought it would be fun to add some honey to it and a little bit of sweetness for this class and this demo. So I trialed it with honey, and I think it's like turned out pretty awesome. So I'm gonna take out about 15 or 16 tubes. Okay, maybe 17, just because I don't wanna be stuck with liquid still in my double boiler and not enough tubes for them to go in, because once it cools off, which happens very fast, you have to remelt it in, in order to pour it again. So I'm just going to make sure I have enough tubes ready. So I'm going to take all the caps off and then I'm going to rubber band them all together so they stand up. You can also buy little contraptions that help you fill up chapstick tubes and I'll show you one. Actually one just came in this batch of tubes that I bought and I've never had one before. I always just do this rubber band method but I'll show you what it looks like. I'm just going to rubber band these all. Okay. So you get, yeah, practice. Okay, so you get like a little honeycomb shape of tubes. So that's ready to go when my beeswax gets melted. The other things I'm gonna add in after this comes off the heat, I'm gonna add some vitamin E oil to it. And I decided to do vanilla and frankincense in these ones. Vanilla is gonna add some nice scent and sweetness to this as well. And the frankincense is really a great healing essential oil. So this is going to be wonderful to be inside your lip balm. For the essential oils, 10 to 20 drops for this batch, which this batch is supposed to make about 15 tubes of lip balm. 10 to 20 total? Yep, 10 to 20 total. So for this one, I'm gonna do five drops of vanilla and about 10 drops of frankincense. So if you do get stung, a great thing to try is purification essential oil. This is a blend, but I use this for bug bites, bee stings, any of that stuff. It's very soothing for the skin. Yep, and I just added undiluted. I'll just grab the bottle of it and just drop it right on top. Okay, so we're almost there. I mean, this is all melted together. It almost just looks like honey in here. And I'm going to keep it on a little bit because I can already tell that it's pretty cool out here. So as soon as I start pouring these, some of it is going to solidify. So I'm gonna remelt it so I can pour the rest of it into the tubes. So I'm gonna work quickly and take that off the heat. I'll do my vitamin E oil. Just a couple squirts in there. 10 drops of frankincense. And I'll do five of vanilla. So I'm just gonna stir that together. Just in that little bit of time I had it off of the steam here, some of it did solidify. So I'm just going to keep that steamy water handy. So my double boiler has a pour spout on it, which I love because you can keep a pretty close eye on how much liquid is going down. So these little tubes fill up pretty fast. You want to just keep an eye on it at a little bit at a time and try not to overflow. If they do overflow, it just turns into a little bit of a mess, but you deal with it after it cools off. In all my years, seven years of doing essential oils and kind of making my own DIY stuff, I've probably made 20 batches of chapstick or lip balm. All different scents and flavors, but usually with the same base ratios. 
these little lip balms are great for giving out as gifts. Like I will make a batch of this and drop them in stocking stuffers for the family. Okay, I'm gonna melt the rest of this a little bit more so I can get the last maybe one and a half or so in there. And you can mix it up, do whatever scents and flavors you like or wanna try. Because all the essential oils basically will behave about the same in there. The only caveat is you want to use good quality essential oils that are not diluted because diluted oils will mess with the ratio of oils and um, solids that you have in your uh, base. Like I only use Young Living oils because those are the oils I know that I love that um, I know are clean and not diluted or adulterated. All right. So you can see I still have a little bit in there, not enough to melt down and fill up another tube. So I'm just gonna let that go. These are gonna sit in the tubes for about 30 minutes and cool off. While they're doing that, I'm gonna cap them in case I forget to do that later and I wanna take this rubber band off. It's easiest to cap them when they're all banded together. So this is just gonna cool over here. Later on, um, to finish up the class, when you guys come and make your propolis tincture, you're gonna put a label on your own lip balm and take that with you too. All right, so let's get to the next part of the story. We're gonna talk about essential oils. So no two substances work exactly the same. So a well-rounded approach is to use a variety of remedies at the same time. So remember that double-sided attack. That's why um, we're talking about oils and um, honey at the same time. Essential oils, in case you're not familiar with what they are, they are concentrated extracts. That's gonna be the first uh, picture of a flower that you see on the next slide. Concentrated extracts from plants, herbs, trees, or rind of the fruit. The next one next to that is extracted by. So essential oils are extracted by steam distillation or cold pressing. On the bottom left, essential oils are more potent. They're more potent than the botan botanicals from which they are extracted. So they really are a concentrated version of that tree, plant, flower, or whatever um, it comes from. And then the last picture, essential oils contain powerful concentrated health and wellness benefits. Young Living's process that I mentioned, I only use Young Living oils because I know them, I love them. I know that they're always good quality. On the next slide, you'll see Young Living's unique process is called the Seed to Seal Guarantee. They are grown by corporate owned farms, partner farms, or certified suppliers. And this is true of any Young Living farm that you go to. You can literally walk up to the gate and tell them that you want to take a tour of the farm and they will give you a tour of the farm. Everything is open. They are very transparent about what happens on their farms. You can actually go see and touch and sometimes even help harvest the plants that their oils come from. They are harvested, farm grown, or wild crafted plants, herbs, and trees. So Young Living has control over which seeds are used at their farms. And then they follow that process all the way through to make sure that they're only using the best quality raw material to make these essential oils. They are distilled, extracted botanicals are concentrated into a liquid form through a distilling process. For example, if you go and visit like a lavender harvest, you'll see them gather up all of the um, lavender plants and they pile them all up, like kind of like this, where we have like a big pile of branches, they'll just pile them all up. They'll throw them into a steam distillation chamber. They'll bubble hot water up from the bottom to make that steam and that steam lifts the essential oils out of the plant material it travels over to a condenser where they cool off that liquid. And then in this picture, you'll see different phases of that liquid. The very top layer is that pure essential oil. So they'll decant off everything on the bottom and they'll keep just the pure essential oil on the top. And that is what gets bottled into these essential oil bottles. How we use essential oils, you can use them topically. You can soak them right into your skin. Anything that you put on your body that contacts your skin gets absorbed into your body, whether you like it or not, whether you did it on purpose or not, that is what happens. So essential oils can be used topically on your body. You can also use essential oils aromatically. So this picture in the middle shows a diffuser. You can certainly add oils and water to your diffuser. It's a great replacement for candles to make your home smell good. It also comes with health benefits. It's a great way to switch over from using candles, which are toxic and usually filled with artificial fragrance to using something clean and beneficial to your health. So breathe them in. You can breathe them through a diffuser or you can simply open the bottle and smell them right out of the bottle, you get that great aromatic health effect that way too. 
You can also do more like old school ways. You can do like a steamer bowl. If you're feeling really congested, you can get a nice like pot or bowl of hot water, drop some essential oils on it. You can cover your head with a towel and just kind of sit in there for a minute or two and breathe that warm vapor. That is gonna be great for your respiratory health too. And then internally, you can take oils in through a variety of methods. So we're gonna sample some Ningxia Red um, antioxidant juice drink has essential oils in it. It's a great gut supporting blend of essential oils. You can also use essential oils for so many other things that I'm not gonna cover like specifically everything, but you'll get some bits of it as we go along. But there are also great um, oil infused supplements that you can take as well. And then of course, just like oils, you can just put these in a little capsule that you make yourself and you can take them internally, which is what I do for say like allergies or something like that. Put, it in your water. put them in your water. Yep, put them in your tinctures, put them in your juice. All of that stuff is a good way to take them in. Next slide, immune system favorites. The top left is the Thieves Blend. So this Thieves Blend is known for immune support and cleansing properties. Have you guys heard the story of Thieves? Have you heard of Thieves before? Yes, okay, do you guys have Young Living Oils already? Yeah, so in case you guys don't know the story of thieves, this story came about from a legend back during the bubonic plague where a band of thieves was going around and robbing the bodies of the sick and dying and they never seemed to get sick. So when they were captured by the authorities, they were given a more lenient sentence in exchange for their secrets on how they were able to do that without getting sick. They did reveal to them that they were using a special blend of oils and spices that they would anoint themselves with before they went out to work. And thus the thieves blend is kind of based loosely on what was revealed during that interview. The next one, the middle one on the top is Immu Power. That's this one, and you guys can come up and smell any of these oils if you would like to. Amu Power is a blend. It contains hyssop, mountain savory, cystus, camphor, frankincense, oregano, clove, cumin, and dorado azul. All of those are really great antiviral and immunomodulating herbs. All of that power has been distilled into the um, individual essential oils and then combined into this blend. Next is purification. A different blend with citronella, lavender, lemongrass, myrtle, rosemary, and tea tree. So all of these different blends are used, I would say they're used differently. They all have their own unique scents as well. And I encourage people to just try them and see what they like best. So if you say like you love Thieves essential oil and you want to use this one all the time, then use this one. If you really, really like purification, because it smells good to you or like it feels good being on your body, then use purification, okay? I'm not gonna tell everybody to get everything and use everything because if you don't jive with one oil or another, you're not gonna use it and you're not gonna get the most benefit out of it. So find the ones that you like. Those are gonna be the ones that are gonna work best for you. On the bottom here, Ningxia Red. You'll see some bottles that look like this and some little single serve packets. Ningxia is a daily supplement that's packed with antioxidant superfoods and essential oils. So this is gonna be a good time for us to try a little bit of Ningxia because this is a supplement that I personally take every single day. My kids take every single day. They love it. They ask for it. They would drink about 10 times as much as I let them have in a day. Up your daily dose of this is two to four ounces. It's called Ningxia Red. Yeah, so this is based on the goji berry. Oh, And these particular goji berries are grown in the Ningxia province of China, which is why this drink is called Ningxia Red because all of the goji berries that Young Living uses come, yeah, they come from Ningxia, China, from an approved partner firm. Mm -hmm. Do oils expire? Oils do not expire. As long as you have good quality essential oils that are not diluted mm -hmm. with a carrier oil, that it's usually the carrier oil that will expire. Essential oils themselves in their pure form do not expire. They can evaporate because they are the volatile organic parts of the plant. So you want to make sure that you cap them when you're not using them, cap them tightly and keep them in a dark space so they don't um, break down from the light or from evaporating, but they won't expire, they won't go bad. Immu Pro, did I bring that? Yeah, Immu Pro. This is a supplement that you take at nighttime. This has wolfberry, which is that goji berry from Ningxia. It has mushroom powders, which we saw in our um, immunomodulating. Um, that mushroom powders are great for your immune system. Um, it also contains zinc, 
selenium, and some melatonin. And melatonin is why you take this at night because it will help you get good sleep. Melatonin is also very well known for boosting your immune system. Aside from the sleep factor, which you need your sleep to get well, but the melatonin itself, the way that it works with your body chemistry is good for your immune system. And then inner defense. I use this one for acute situations. It's a mixture of oregano, thyme, and the thieves blend. So this is gonna have those antiviral herbs um, in them. This is one that I use when I'm starting to feel run down or if I can feel something coming on, if I have a scratchy throat coming on. Inner defense, that's something that I tell every single one of my customers and clients that I work with. You have to have a bottle of inner defense in your cabinet for when you need it. Because when you need it, it's going to be too late to order it. So you just have to have it there in your home ready to go. For those who don't have essential oils yet, this is how you're going to get essential oils into your home. There's a link here. Of course, Young Living is a referral-based business. So anything that you buy with my referral link or your referral link from your favorite Young Living distributor, they're going to earn a commission on that. And that's how the business works with Young Living. So people who share their knowledge about oils and want people to have them in their homes, they get to grow a business that way with Young Living Essential Oils. So there's a link that you can type in to be able to put my specific referral number in there, which would be amazing and I would absolutely appreciate all of that. How you get essential oils, so go, if you don't have that specific link or you're unable to read it to type it in, you're gonna go to youngliving.com. You're going to add your items into your cart and you're gonna check out. Pretty easy, right? It's gonna ask you if you already have an account you just sign in. If you don't have an account, it's going to have you create one. So once you create your account, you add in all your good personal information that they're going to use to send you your order. And then they're going to ask you, did somebody refer you to Young Living? And you're going to say yes. You'll add in my referral number, which is 2022518. And that's how Young Living is going to know that I was the one that referred you. Talking about pricing, pricing discounts happen through a couple different ways. If you wanna pay full price for your products, you totally can. You can order any item, any quantity at any frequency and you just pay the full price for it. If you would like a 24% discount on your Young Living goodies, you can order 100 PV, which is basically like $100 worth on one single order, or you can order any item and put it on a subscription. That subscription can be very flexible. You can order it monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly. And you can change what's in your subscription every time your subscription comes up. So you don't have to order the same thing over and over again, but having that item come to you through a subscription is going to unlock that 24% discount for you. Then if you want to do a consistent subscription order, you will always get that at a 24% discount. You can also earn loyalty rewards on that for anything over 50 PV, which is like $50 in a single order. And then you are eligible for loyalty gifts at three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. Young Living will just send you a free bottle of oil at each of those intervals just to say thank you for being a loyal customer of Young Living that they appreciate you. And then you can choose your frequency. You can choose to order monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly. And then any way you order, the full price, the 24% discount, or the subscription, all of those are going to be eligible for free gifts with purchase and free shipping at specific quantities too. Every month, Young Living puts together this set, which is so great. It's all about the freebies for you just for ordering the things from Young Living that you love already. So add 100 PV. Remember, that's where you unlock that 24% discount. You also get free shipping there. 190 PV, you get the free shipping plus a nutmeg essential oil. And if you're ordering on subscription, um, if you're not doing subscription, you just get a clove and a cinnamon bark. If you do 250 PV, add on a patchouli essential oil. At 300 PV, add on this Immu Pro, which is amazing too. This month, if you do 400 PV, you get all of that stuff, plus adding on a Young Living Foundation mug and a pack of their spiced turmeric tea. So super fun just to have some extra goodies. Like when my, when my family orders our subscription every month, we, we have trouble keeping it down to what's listed on here because honestly, like we use so much good stuff from Young Living every single month that um, we could go hog wild and order the entire catalog all the time because we use their shampoos, their conditioners, their oils, their supplements, their Ningxia, all the good stuff. So it's really fun to have like these free gifts coming to us for stuff that we're already loving and ordering anyways. 
right, so daily oil routine. What do I do in the morning? This is not all inclusive and I change it up sometimes, but these are some of my basic, my staples. Morning oils, I apply for my endocrine support. I have a thyroid disorder, a low thyroid disorder, which is non-Hashimoto's, which I'm trying to support naturally. I got off of my Synthroid prescription medication about a year ago. So I've been working over the last year to try to get my system back up and working without that prescription. So every morning I'm doing endocrine support oils. I'm applying oils for my emotions too. If I didn't quite get enough sleep or if I know it's going to be a busy day, a stressful day, I'm going to proactively add some oils, put them on topically to just support my emotional health for that day. And then for the past six months or so, I've been using this CBD skin serum, which has been really great and I love and it has CBD and it has a rose essential oil in it which are great for your skin so I'm loving that in the morning with my lunch with your biggest meal of the day you should take your multivitamin I take a multivitamin called master formula this is from Young Living so this is what it looks like it comes in a box like this for the month the box pops open in the back it has these sachets with four different caplets in there this is a daily dose I don't break them up I just take them all at the same time the reason that these are broken up like this is because the packaging and storage of of the different components are specific to the vitamin or mineral that they're targeting. So you'll see like this brown, this like amber looking one, looks like honey in there. This is actually an oil caplet. So this has carrier oil in it and it has all of the oils that are fat soluble. The other two, um, these are pressed powders that are in this caplet form. And then you have a dry pressed caplet as well. So these are packaged to preserve the integrity of that specific vitamin and mineral. So I love this instead of just like a, a men's or women's once a day multi that is all packaged together and really having low bioavailability. Doing something like this is going to make those vitamins and minerals do more good work in your body that your body can break them down and use them efficiently. I also will take um, like a green supplement, extra vitamin D, super B, and then an eye support supplement as well. And the D and B specifically I'm taking for my um, thyroid support. So I've seen the master formula has B and D in it. Mm -hmm. As well, you need to take an extra. Yep, I'm taking extra. Because from the research that I have done, you need to take like 4,000 IUs of vitamin D to really support your body in like an extra way. And uh, this has like, 10 uh, micrograms, which is like 1,000 IUs. And we live in Minnesota. We have very little exposure to um, sunlight when it's not summertime. Nixia Red, which I take every single day. I take this with mineral essence, and I also take it with my elderberry too if I'm having I'm in an elderberry dose that day. So I, the mineral essence comes in a tincture, so it looks like a liquid with a dropper. And so I'll pour myself my Ningxia, I'll add my mineral essence in there. The reason I take the mineral essence is because a lot of the minerals are important for my thyroid as well. It also has that royal jelly, which I'm glad you pointed that out. That's like superfood for your brain. So really good for your brain development, for your memory, for your cognitive health. And then I also, since the first time I got pregnant, get these random cramps in my calves and they come on. I, I can't really figure out why or when, hydration, whatever, activity. Since starting to take the mineral essence, I almost never get them. Helping to balance that sodium potassium pump in my muscles, I think, has, has really helped out a lot. And then at bedtime, my bedtime routine looks like Imupro if I'm feeling a little bit run down. Or I'll take a supplement called Unwind, which has magnesium, 5-HTP, and L-theanine in it. Those are all great calming things for bedtime. Um, I also will do the CBD serum topically for my skin. And then I'll redo those oils for my endocrine support. And then also add in some oils for hormonal support. So when I'm feeling down, it's a little bit different routine. So I'm still doing my normal routine, but when I'm feeling down, I add in some extras. I'll take like a double or triple dose of Ningxia because it's so good for your immune system to just have little bits of Ningxia throughout the day. Having even a total of like six or eight ounces in a day is fine. Breaking it up and having them throughout the day is gonna be more effective for your immune system than drinking like six ounces in the morning and then letting it go all day. Um, do Ningxia and inner defense in the morning. I'll put thieves on my body and I'll put it in the diffuser. In the afternoon with lunch, I'm gonna keep my afternoon supplement, that master formula. I'm also gonna change out my diffuser. If I need to add more thieves to it, I'll get that going again. I'll put thieves on my body again. Evening, I'm redoing the Ningxia. I'm redoing the inner defense, because that's antimicrobial. Change the diffuser again, put more thieves on my body. And then at bedtime, doing this Immupro. I'm gonna support my body through the antimicrobial attack too because, so these antimicrobials, they're pretty nonspecific. They will 
they'll go after everything, um, including your good gut bacteria. That's why it's important when you're taking Inner Defense to take a probiotic with it. So I'm taking this um, Inner Defense throughout the day. Leave a couple hours until you're ready to go to bed and then take your probiotic right before bed to let your gut repopulate while you're sleeping and rebuild your immune system naturally that way. I also like in my bedtime diffuser when I'm feeling down, I love this blend called Egyptian Gold or Purification in the diffuser. And I'll put that thing like right by my head. It's like right in my face when I'm diffusing at night. Um, but come up and smell this one uh, later on because it's so good. It's one of my favorite blends. So when you say you put your sleeves on, you just take the oil and just... I'll put it everywhere. I'll put like a chest rub on my chest. I can put the oil right on my feet. The great thing about this um, like thieves oil is it comes either like this with a dropper top. So you can put it in the diffuser or it comes like this in a roller. So you can just roll it on any part of your body that you want. Oil itself, you don't have to mix with a... A carrier. This one, it's like a hot oil. It's considered like spicy. You probably want to dilute it if you're putting it on your body. So the good thing about these rollers is these are diluted already with Young Living's V6 oil and these don't expire either. It's such like a good quality carrier oil that I've never known one of the, their pre-made rollers to expire. So yeah, this is already diluted. So you could just roll this one right on your skin. It's not spicy. Um, it's not spicy feeling. What's that? This is Thieves. Yeah. So there's a variety of pre-made rollers from Young Living. Thieves is one of them. If you have the bottle, you want to dilute this before you put that on your body. It's a good question. Put it on your feet. You can't really feel it. Yeah, you can't really feel it on the bottom of your feet if you do it undiluted. What do you use? What is the Egyptian gold for? That one is a great like immune defense oil. I love diffusing that. It's really actually good for your skin as well. So you can dilute it and you can just massage it into your face or your um, your chest the back of your hands. If I'm gonna put it on my face, I'll use like a sweet almond oil or an argan oil, something that is made for, um, like to not clog. Egyptian gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come up and smell that one. Next slide, recent publications about essential oils. Absolutely not exhaustive. There are literally hundreds of peer reviewed papers about the benefits of essential oils. If you go to pubmed.gov and you type in benefits of essential oil, like you will be shocked at how much comes up and fish through it, read through it. That's what I do. I, um, if you follow me on Instagram, I post like once a week, I'll post a video about some clinical study that I read about what oils have been shown to do in a real life study with real life people at Living With Abundance uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram or I will repost those to my Facebook page as well. This one I pulled from the Young Living website, the ones that they're highlighting at the moment and they change their list of highlighted publications all the time as well too. Recent publications are showing benefits for sleep, for anxiety, for your mouth, your, your oral, oral health, um, and also for your brain health. That list is not exhaustive. I encourage you to go like look at what benefits there are from essential oils because there's so many and I'm happy to answer any questions about stories or studies that I have already summarized already that are on my Instagram. You can go watch those. I try to keep them short two to five minutes for each one so you're not spending a whole day learning just like a little snippet. The next slide is a quote from D. Gary Young. He's the founder of Young Living Essential Oils. One of his famous quotes is I don't make product for a profit. I make them for a purpose. Every single product that is in the Young Living catalog is there for a purpose. All of the supplements and essential oils that are in that catalog were made and formulated by Gary to support his family either something that he needed, something that his wife needed, something that his children needed. He wanted to improve the health of his family first. And he thought, if I'm making these to support my family, if we're loving them, if we're thriving on them, the rest of the world needs to have access to this as well. So that's how Young Living Essential Oils was founded because one man had this vision to improve the health of people worldwide without it being through a doctor without it being through prescription medications. Everybody is capable of taking their own health and wellness into their own hands. And I think that these essential oils are such an important tool to make that happen. So I just love being able to share that message that essential oils do belong in every single home. And part of my fun job is to show people how to use them. Hope you guys have learned some of that today, that you have kind of caught some of my passion and love for all of this stuff, because this is how I take care of my family. My five kids and my husband and I, we just had a cold run through the house um, a couple weeks ago. I wasn't running to the pharmacy. I wasn't running up to Cub at midnight because someone needed cough syrup. 
we have all the tools in our home that we need. If someone has a fever, I don't need to go buy them Tylenol and Advil and all of that stuff because they're not going to take it anyways. They hate it. They hate the way it tastes. They hate the way it smells. I have something just as effective to use for them right in my home that I'm not having to go out and, and buy at Cub Foods. I'd love to like bring you in and show you more of how we do that too because this class is just a taste of what happens with natural wellness. I'm always teaching. I'm always up for sharing what I know, how we do things, and I hope that you guys can kind of join in on some of that too. The last thing that we're gonna do is make our propolis tincture. Propolis, if you remember back, way back to the beginning of this class, um, propolis is that sap and resin based uh, material that the bees use to seal up the hive. This is the bee's immune system. This is a propolis tincture. This tincture was made by adding 110 grams of propolis. So that's like that hard stuff that gets scraped off of the front of the frame. Yes. Um, that's like seals in all the honey. And, and I used 151 grain alcohol, a super strong alcohol to extract all the goodness out of that propolis. The liquid that you see here is it's straight alcohol. And the amber color is from the extracted propolis. If you are not okay having alcohol or you choose not to have alcohol, this particular propolis tincture is not gonna be for you. There's an alternate propolis extraction method on the next slide, which is done with food grade vegetable glycerin, which I'm gonna try that next. The next time Tanya gives me a batch of propolis, I'm gonna extract it with glycerin. I'm gonna see how that goes. I've been using this and I will tell you it is quite strong because it's straight grain alcohol that you get that heat from, uh, but you also get the benefit of the propolis. So if you wanna try it, I have materials for you to come up and make your own propolis tincture so you get to take that home. What this propolis tincture is, say, let's see, yeah, we're using this size. You take this uh, spray bottle, you fill it about halfway with honey, and then you fill the rest of it with this propolis tincture. You shake it up. You can add one drop of essential oil to it. I added peppermint to mine because I wanted that that like sweet and like minty flavor. One drop of peppermint is plenty because the heat from the peppermint combined with the heat of the alcohol is gonna give you like a pretty good zing. Three to five sprays of this every single day is gonna be a great immunomodulating tincture for you to use. You just spray it in your mouth. Yep, it's great for sore throats. It's great for people who talk a lot, who <laughs> present, you know, singers, actors, all of that. So many stories and testimonies about those types of performers using a propolis spray to keep their throats in good health. So you're welcome to come up and do that. Thank you so much for watching this class. I have absolutely had a blast teaching it. So right now, I would love for you to just open up your email, send me an email back at diana at dianadetcher.com and tell me something that you are excited to start using, either a bee product or an essential oil, and tell me how I can help serve you with more classes in the future and more information about these awesome essential oils or how to hook you up with some honey from the Honey Hut. So take care, be well, and I'll see you in the next class.